In today's video, we're going to be taking a detailed look at the origins of the bauble. So let's get started. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bauble channel. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about the bauble. And then how to become high level canine leaders that can raise the perfect bauble. So, if you're a lifelong lover, thinking about getting one or just started your journey with your new bauble, then this is the channel for you. So, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss another upload. So then, let's get into today's video where we'll be looking at the origins of the bauble in detail. Let's start where the breed began. These hardy looking dogs were bred to help aid the farmers of South Africa in defending their homes and land from predators such as hyenas, lions and all other kinds of deadly wildlife. The humans behind the breed were Dutch settlers in South Africa in the 1600s. These Europeans brought their own large strong breeds to the country and bred them with indigenous domesticated dogs. Their name, Bauble, actually comes from the combination of Afrikaans and Dutch words for farmer, boa and dog, bol. During the 1800s, the colonists began to move inland, scattering the already established settlements, meaning that the dogs were also scattered across the country. They were taken in by isolated communities for protection, and it wasn't until after the World Wars that the bauble was crossbred with any other breeds. This nearly ruined the bauble as a specific breed until some breed enthusiasts took it upon themselves to keep the breed as pure as possible in the 1980s. The ancient scripture surrounding this breed is vast. Whilst it won't be about the bauble as we know it today, it instead follows the ancestral timeline of how the breed came to be. In a document written by Philmond Holland, there are several references to prominent persons utilising large dogs for various jobs, and in the same document there is a reference to the King of Albania gifting an impressive dog to Alexander the Great, who was not impressed to begin with, but legend has it that when he pitted the dog against the lion, the dog won. It's popular thought that the origins of the breed came about during the Roman Empire, where Molossus breeds were popular companions in battle. The Romans then spread across the British Isles and Europe. A noteworthy person is Jan van Riebeck of the Dutch East India Company. And this is because he took the trustworthy Bullenbiter with him to Cape Town, South Africa in 1652 to secure a trade deal. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt the video. I wanted just to quickly let you know, if you're interested in watching more videos about me actually working with dogs, following the cases of the behavior modification programs and the different training programs that I implement, as well as me training and raising my own dogs then we've got a dedicated channel to that exact thing it's called Fenrir canine training there's tons of videos on there and there's multiple new videos of me working with dogs and some of our Fenrir certified trainers working with dogs to give you incredible levels of value and to help you have perfect canine companions just like these guys here so there'll be a link in the description box below I can't wait to see you over on that channel the colonists then followed Rebec also brought their big mastiff type dogs with them as a only the toughest animals could survive in the harsh lands of South Africa. Fast forward to the 1820s and it was British settlers coming to South Africa that then brought over bulldog breeds that were introduced to the heritage. But it wasn't until 1928 that a true bull mastiff was imported by De Beers. This mix of Reenbeck's colonist bull and biters, British bulldogs and the bull mastiff in the 1940s to 1950s are said to be the building blocks of the bauble. But we mustn't forget that the native African dogs that also contributed to the breed. Whilst there isn't much in the way of records of these dogs, it's believed that the black African tribes brought their dogs with them when they moved south through the continent. And when they crossed paths with the Dutch and British colonists, their dogs were brought together to breed the first baubles. As previously mentioned, the bauble came to be utilised as a guard and protection dog. The genetics they have inherited has given them the power to see off the most formidable predators South Africa has to offer. These are working dogs and excel in working environments. They form a loyalty to their family and have a keen sense as to what they need to protect, whether that's a house, land or humans. Although they're not ones to start a fight, they can end one and that has been a trait that was desired at the time in which they were created. Even wounded, a lion, hyena or other African wildlife will still pose a threat and the bauble knows that. 
What is key here is that they will protect what is theirs to their last breath, and that's a special kind of loyalty shown by this massive breed. Today, the Bulbul still stands proud as a formidable guarding and protection dog, but their image has also evolved to be included as great family dogs. They will still thrive as a small holding or farm guardian, but their intelligence and attentive nature has made them adaptable to being watchful guardians in the home too. Modern technology in farming has lessened the need for guard dogs, but for some centuries in their native South Africa, these dogs are still high, held to a high esteem. They're gaining popularity in other countries too, such as Australia, New Zealand, and even the UK. And they're still commonly used and are still a favoured breed amongst South Africans for both guarding and family additions. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and get involved down on the comment section below. And don't forget, if you are new here, to make sure you subscribe. We have two dedicated bauble videos coming here every single week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Bauble channel.